Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results of Izyaslav Inkvarievich of the Rurik dynasty. Um, Izyaslav lived in Ukraine, but there is this common misconception that um, these Rurikid people, they were all very Scandinavian and not alike the people they lived among. That's not true, because every Rurikid that's here on illustrative DNA is similar to either Russians or Ukrainians or some other Eastern European ethnicity, but never to Scandinavians. Uh, so what's interesting, by the way, is this Rurik, he's a Rurik kid, but his Y DNA is very Slavic. And the other Rurik kids that are here on the illustrative DNA, their Y DNA is I2, which is once again Slavic, or N1, which is not Scandinavian in the slightest, and one is a Finnish Finno Greek Scandinavian, Finno Scandian not Scandinavian lineage, right? Uh, so, it, that's very interesting that there's three dirty kids, all three of them have different Y-DNA, and all three of them are closest to not anything in the Scandinavia when it comes to autosomal DNA. So, for example, Izyaslav, as you can see, is closest to Ukrainians from Cherkasy, um, Chernigov, Zhytomyr, uh, then the Russians from Belgorod. So, uh, basically, very... Uh, very uh, southern Russian slash East Ukrainian in terms of admixture. There's Sumi here, yeah, Sumi once again East Ukrainian. Uh, Dnipro is a little bit further, which is interesting. Dnipro, I would expect, would be similar to Cherkasy, because they're right next to each other. But yeah. So um, we're gonna move on to the appearance of Izyaslav. This is what he looked like. He's got blue color eyes. He's got dark blonde hair, lighter fair skin, and this is his predicted eye color. Let me, uh, yep, make it bigger. Wait, so we can actually compare the eye color here to the eye color that was generated by my, uh, by my executable version. So we're gonna go ahead and, and check why such a score. Why is he scoring the way he is? So he's got blue appetite three and two and one. So he's got the whole package. He's got BH1, BH2, BH3. He does not have BH4, but okay. Uh, very light if you just look at his genotype in Oka2 and Herc2. Um, he also has two derived variants in all the SLC45A2 variations that have to do with, um, with skin tone. Once again, very light skin. Okay. Um, Yeah, does not have the um, like the, the pale skin, blue eyes, um, red hair thing in IRF four, but um, you know you don't really need that to have blue eyes. You you all the stuff that he has is enough, more than enough. All of his other genotypes are more than enough to have blue eyes. Um. Yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. He does not have East Asian EDAR. And for the nose shape prediction for him, the nose shape prediction for him is Greek shaped nose. Right, so he's got, um, he's got Greek shaped nose. Blonde hair, blue eyes. Yep. All right. Now we're gonna go ahead and check his Oka2 and Herc2 eye color prediction. Looks blue as well. Cool. And polygenic risk scores. He's got below average score for schizophrenia. He's got above average score for type 2 diabetes. And he's got below average score for Alzheimer's. We're gonna check why. Okay, so he's got AG in Comets Valmet variation, meaning Valmet genotype, intermediate spin of dopamine reuptake, intermediate dopamine levels between the warrior and the warrior genotype. He's actually got, uh, it seems like, the warrior genotype in MIOA, so a little bit more warrior than warrior, so a little bit more dopamine in the system, a little bit slower dopamine reuptake than what's typical. Um, certain advantages and attention tasks come together with this kind of a genotype. But there's also disadvantages, um, disadvantages in stress resilience, for example. 
he does not have derived no go learner variant in drd2 pro friends in pro interesting but he does have ag in tac1 which is very surprising so he actually has the a allele in tac1 um the a1 allele it's also called sometimes so the a1 allele the presence of every a1 allele uh, reduces the, uh, the availability of dopamine due to receptors by 20 percent so he's got it's like he's it's like he's taking an antipsychotic drug that's blocking 20 percent of his dopamine due to receptors that's basically how it is uh, living with this kind of a genotype so there is a slightly increased increased likelihood of stuff like alcoholism parkinson's adhd there is a decrease in the risk of you know obviously stuff like schizophrenia but um that's a very peculiar genotype. Uncommon genotype for humans to have. It's uncommon for humans to see the A allele here. Most humans have GG. But not to say that it doesn't happen. Not to say that it isn't present uh, among humans. Um, he does not have long form 5 HTTLPR. So uh, it seems that this individual, um, uh, this individual has short form 5-HTTLPR, just like most of you guys, does not have a decrease in the risk of depression. Uh, he does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. Interesting. That's kind of surprising because European lactose persistence mutation is very common among modern uh, Ukrainians and Russians. I don't have it either, actually. I don't have um, any of the European lactose persistence mutations, but I, I thought that would be pretty uncommon to see um, among Russians or Ukrainians. He has one sociopath variant for reduced OXTR expression and lack of empathy. Uh, so it seems that he's actually heterozygous for the OXTR, for the main variation of OXTR that has to do with empathy. Um, but he's got... <coughs> <coughs> But he's got CC here, which is associated with increased OXTR expression and higher levels of empathy. Interesting. Okay. For diabetes, I think he had a high score for type 2 diabetes, so we're going to find out why. Uh, he's got GG here, which leads to lower odds of type 2 diabetes. He's got GG here, which leads to lower odds of type 2 diabetes. And... These two genotypes lead to a slight increase in the risk of type 1 diabetes. Um, I think there was there is some other uh, variations that are not shown on the screen that contribute to the score. Keep that in mind. <coughs> oh. <coughs> okay. For hemochromatosis, he's not a not a carrier of any of the hemochromatosis mutations. Okay. For Alzheimer's, no risk alleles for any of the APOE tool, or uh, no risk variants in any of the APOE variations, which are the most important variations for Alzheimer's. None of the other ones really matter that much. No micro P, no micro P. <laughs> um, one fat gene variant in, a, in FTOs, RS99396609, slightly higher odds of obesity and sleep apnea. Better performing muscles, likely sprinter rather than endurance athlete. Um, no shell shift incisors, no East Asian ancestry. European facial traits, very uncommon genotype for East Asian. So uh, when it comes to the EZAR genotype, very European genotype in EZAR. Not an East Asian flusher. Uh, once again, he's a European, so he's not going to have this trait. And no albinism variants. However, there is... Yeah? Yeah, no albinism variants. He does have one of the variants for familiar Mediterranean fever, which is very interesting. Uh, very Mediterranean um, disease to have. I don't think having one risk variant for that is enough to actually develop it, but he has one risk variant for familiar Mediterranean fever. And um, that's pretty much all there is to it. Thanks for watching until the end. You can download this file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Goodbye.